one of the uh, men who is in Better Call Saul um, and so terrific in this. And uh, I'm a big fan of his and thrilled that he's calling in now in support of his new movie, Playing God, which is available now in theaters, VOD, and all digital platforms. Michael McKeon here on The Rich Eisen Show. How are you, sir? I'm good, Rich. How's everything there? Uh, we're, we're good. We're healthy. We're knocking on wood, getting ready for an NFL season, talking pop culture. All good times. Okay. Just look, I can't talk NFL with you. It's okay. Uh, you know, I, I, well, is Namath, is Namath still playing? <laughs> well, I'm here's a behind on football, I, is all I'm saying. I think Joe is selling gold on certain parts <laughs> of the game. <laughs> Out of his teeth. <laughs> He's no, me. come on. That's a bad joke. Uh, I no, I, I was I was never. It's funny. I was never a football fan. Always baseball fan. Okay. But my dad, my dad was one of those guys in the late sixties. Live or die with the Jets. Well, <laughs> you 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 saved yourself a lifetime. Of- <laughs> ah, of course, of course. But so so are you? So are you met Yankee? Which baseball team were you? Were no, you? Are you a fan? No, of? sir. I was. I was. Uh, I grew up in New York. Yes. And uh, when I was an infant, my father told me that the Dodgers were the team to root for because uh, uh, aside from Jackie Robinson I was also the rookie of the year in 1946 <laughs> that, that. rookie of my life I, I was born that year yes. and uh, so I was always a Dodger fan um, when they moved I kind of soured on baseball I tried to root for the Mets uh, they, I thought they were really fun to watch and everything and, but then when they got good it was sort of right around the time that I moved to LA and I became a Dodger fan again so uh, anyway, well, no, it's a but, be- uh, look, I, man. I mean, Dodger Stadium. I, 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 it's funny because I'm from Staten Island, New York. You're from Manhattan, right, Michael? Correct. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, yeah, but I grew up on Long Island. Okay, so you're 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 a New Yorker, so you know that we've yeah. always grew up viewing Los Angeles sports fans as a little soft for showing up late to games and leaving early because because of, of the traffic. Well, they do. But they do. But <laughs> I, I, ever since I've moved here to Los Angeles, I am one of those people. I am abs- I'm, 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 I am unabashedly <laughs> well, I, one of those people. You know, I've never I've never left a game early, but uh, uh, I, I like to come early too and get my hot dog dealings done and, well, I love and all that. that. And you know, it's, it is a great place to see a ball game. But so is Fenway, so is Wrigley. Uh, you know, I thank thank God for ballparks. And you know, we didn't get there this year or last year. Mm-hmm. Last ball game I saw, I think no, we saw one Dodger game. Before that, I went to uh, an Oakland game for the first time. In Oakland, I was up. My wife was doing a show up there, and it was really fun. In Oakland, up there at the the the, yeah, the ancient uh-huh. stadium up there. Oh my gosh! Yeah, which was which was great. It's this kind of like a prison. <laughs> it's kind of like a, no, I mean, it's just no, I know what looked. you mean. It doesn't yeah, look yeah. anything. It's it's one of those old dual purpose parks, you know, where. Yeah. Yeah. Where you know, the, 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 but there's incredible history there from the Oakland Raiders to the old A's with Reggie Jackson and Catfish Hunter, and sure, you know, sure. B- know him well. back in the uh, day, yeah. you know, and they're still great fans. I mean, Oakland has amazing fans uh, just in general. So uh, I, have no, I have come to know. Them. No, but uh, Namath is one of my favorite people on on planet Earth. Yeah. I, I mean, never he, met him. Oh my gosh. I and, and in my in my job with the NFL Network, Michael, uh, I've been fortunate to have come across him, and everybody knows what what it means to me. And one yeah. time, he one time he reached out, he gave me a hug, and like literally, I started crying oh, on the spot. Like it's one, of, sweet. you know what I mean? It's, it's, just, it's just the... I I I got hugged by Peter Falk once. <laughs> uh, I, I I had met him uh, a couple of times. I had dinner with him once, way back many years before. Yes. And and then I was in this movie, and he came to see it because his pal was in it. Yes. And and he gave me this big hug, and it was just. There you go. Okay, I'm good. I'm good now. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I, I think I think Na- Peter Falk is sort of the nameth of uh, of television <laughs> detectives in a way. You know, you know it's what's possible. great about him? I was thinking about him because I, you know, people want to start careers. They want to be in movies and all that stuff, and they wonder if they're not pretty enough or if they don't, you know, look a r- the right way or enough like Brittany or enough like Brad Pitt or whatever. You know, imagine you're, you know, in the early 50s, you're an efficiency expert at a factory and you have a glass eye and a speech impediment and you're about 5'7 or 5'8. Should you become a movie star? Well, if you're Peter Falk, absolutely. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like it's like be be who you really are and there's nowhere else they can buy it. Well, I, I read somewhere, Michael McKeon, once that, and that, by the way, this is what I love about this show and also getting to meet you is I, I didn't think I'd wake up today talking about Peter Falk with Michael McKeon, but this is what I, <laughs> this is life. I, I heard once that the reason why in Colombo that he always looked down and was hunched because that's the way he could see where his mark was to hit on television. That's, <laughs> that's what I heard. Well, 
I don't that's know if possible, that's, but no. you know what? Almost every close-up you see of Spencer Tracy begins with him looking at the floor, or it, it was until it was cut out. He always wanted to be on his mark so they wouldn't have to shoot it again. No. It's just okay. standard practice. And sometimes if you work it into a master shot, see, in, in TV they would stay on the master shot as much as possible. You know, they wanted to get finished by lunch. So there's a, there's a very there's a simplicity to it. I'm, I'm sure that's exactly what he was doing. And yet, who didn't believe that he was actually thinking about <laughs> yes, this case at hand? <laughs> you know, totally. And he was. Yeah, Searching for clues. Time. Michael McKeon here on the Rich Eisen Show. Before I, I dive deep into your, your TV and filmography, let's talk about uh, Playing God, which is available now in theaters, oh, yeah, yeah. VOD, and all digital platforms. Why why uh, why this film, and what what'd you like about it that people should go see uh, it, Michael? Well, I just got this call out of the blue, and they sent me this script, and I, I, you know, I saw, yeah, I kind of get what this is. This, this could be really fun really interesting and then they told me that alan tunic was involved and i was a fan of his firefly series and, and uh you know i'm just he's one of those guys who's always good mm -hmm. and i said yeah this could be good go to atlanta i mean to sorry to houston yes. for three weeks three weeks okay it's going to be warm we know that and uh you say i'm going to be sitting on a rooftop in houston with a three-piece black <laughs> suit okay well we'll try that so it, it just it looked like an interesting thing an interesting story um, I didn't know uh, Hannah uh, and, and, or, or Luke. I didn't know them previous to this, uh, although it turned out later I had seen Hannah in something. Uh, they're really, really good and, like, damn easy on the eye, both of them. And uh, they're this kind of brother-sister con team, you know, who goes after a big, a big prize, which turns out to be a lot more complicated, especially when you get into the, the afterlife. <laughs> And the deities walking around in three-piece suits. It's <laughs> like you <laughs> on rooftops. Well, I, I, yes, uh, I should point out a phony baloney deity. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, but but it's all about this guy's, it's all about the, the character that Alan plays. It's all about his his journey, you know, and he's kind of the, the ticking heart at the middle of this. Well, playing, um, I think it's a nice film. Playing God is available now in theaters, VOD, and all digital platforms, and uh, starring Michael McKeon, who's here on The Rich Eisen Show. Um, usually, I can go deep dive into somebody's TV and filmography, but here on this show, we play a game called Celebrity True or False, where there are some items that have been written about you, and then the Wikipedia um, uh, bullet points yeah. that we're wondering are true or false, and we'd love for you to refute or, or confirm for us, if that's okay. Well, yeah, there are some, there are some famous... Uh, mistakes floating around. Okay, so there. let's let's correct uh, the record. I've been told. Let's correct oh, okay. the record. Here we go. We have actual uh, production value with it. Go ahead and hit it, everybody. Go ahead. Celebrity, true or false? You can't handle the truth. There you go. That's our production value, <laughs> Michael McKeon. That's our production value. Uh, celebrity, true or false? Well, what is? What is the actual value of that tr that production? Uh, it makes me enjoy it. It brings a smile to my face, to be very honest. No, with I you. meant money. I'm talking money. Oh, I, um, I, I think it's it, it pays for it, it pays for itself, Michael. You know what I mean? Brilliant. That's what. Well thank you. Said. I appreciate that. All right, first <laughs> item up for bids. You and David Lander were originally hired as writers on Laverne and Shirley, and wrote yourself into the show as Lenny and Squiggy, two characters you created while in college. True or false? That's true. That is true. Uh, I would have to add one name. Uh, Harry Shearer, who was with David and myself, a member of a group called the Credibility Gap, which was a satirical group here at L.A. radio, and uh, we, we made some albums, went out on the road in, in clubs and, and concerts, etc. cetera. Um, and we were known as the Credibility Gap at this point. Mm -hmm. And Penny Marshall and Rob Reiner were big fans of these characters that we would do just kind of, but we, we, they were in the act kind of toward the end, in the credibility gap back toward the end. But mainly we just did them because these two idiots entertained our friends <laughs> who are also idiots. And so we, uh, but Penny and Rob, Penny, you know, Penny and Cindy sold this show. Gary Marshall, who create, co-created the show with Lowell Gans and Mark Rodman. Um, they, they got, got, they got to go on this show that they had done, not a pilot, but what you call a presentation film for showing some of their stuff from their two appearances on Happy Days, girls. And so, bingo, we got a sale, and Penny said, you guys should come to this party we're having, and maybe you can do those guys. 
you know, that, uh, no, okay, okay. So David and I went to this party at Penny's house, Penny and Rob's house when they were married. And uh, uh, Lowell Gans was there and Mark Roth and some other producers for the show. And we, you know, at one point Rob said to us, do the guys, do the guys. <laughs> and David and David and I went into a piece that we had never done before, never even thought of before. And we, we never did after that, uh, where the guys discussed going to Butler School to become valets. <laughs> and it was pretty funny, as I recall, because everybody was laughing, but I couldn't tell you a thing about it. Right. Uh, yeah. And then so you wrote yourself, and then you wrote yourself into the show, and then off you go. Well, Penny, Penny always had a mind, you know, an eye toward maybe we can write these guys in. Yeah. You know, because they're they're funny kind of fifties characters. So uh, we, you know. It was, it was not something we just volunteered. It was like, you know, Gary thought the characters were funny. Everybody thought the characters were funny. We wrote them in. All right, and then so we wrote them into the first episode and, and everyone after that. And then, so time. the next item uh, here on Celebrity True or False with you, Michael McKeon, is that those characters were so popular. You released a 1979 album called Lenny in the Squig Tones, which featured a young guitarist credited as Nigel Tufnell, Christopher yeah. Guest. And that was the name that he used, obviously, in Spinal Tap. Is that yeah. true? Well, that was his that was his English rocker name. <laughs> he, uh, you know, he had he had done a, a version of that kind of character since, I mean, since I've known him, which was the late '60s, is when Chris and I met at, at, at NYU <laughs> and started writing songs together and stuff and, and just being silly. So why? And, uh, so yeah. let me let me ask you a question about Christopher Guest, who's the his movies are spectacular, and you in them as well. Were you, were you in Waiting for Guffman, or you were not in Waiting for Guffman? No, I what was happened? Off, I, it was uh, I. The original plan was for uh, Chris and I to work on this. The Guffman idea was was something that he wanted to do. It was uh, inspired by a uh, a documentary he had seen about a small city with an opera house and a guy who was just dying to get on stage and be a spear carrier at the opera. That was the initial thing. And then it kind of expanded. And his notion was to make it a, a small town doing their, you know, some kind of celebration and this historical play that this guy's putting on, you know, built around this character that Chris loved to do this, you know, flamboyant, uh, very self-involved, you know, <laughs> guy who's just dying to get to Broadway, <laughs> uh, which was such a such an amazing, such a sweet character. So originally I was going to work on it, and then uh, I, I was doing SNL, and then I was doing the Brady Bunch movie, and that was the chunk of time that he was mm. he had kind of set apart. And so instead, he, he uh, got in touch with Eugene, which was an awfully good idea. Yes. And he, he didn't know Eugene. He was just a fan of, of his work on S SCTV. Etc. And uh, so, you know, they just they got together, and and you know, Gene showed up at his at Chris's cabin, up in the woods, and they uh, they worked on this this idea, and they hatched it into a brilliant movie. So, so it all you, worked out. That's how he met Eugene Levy to get in all of this. So, uh, who's the one on all of these films? Because much of it was, I imagine, ad libbed. Who was the one that was the one that would crack everybody up the most, or easiest to crack up? the most oh michael uh, the most difficult to work with well first of all all of up. the dialogue all the dialogue in chris's stuff is is uh supervised as it was in this is spinal tap the film that we that rob reiner directed yes that we you know that that, that was kind of the model for that this this kind of work and uh yeah a, a lot of times i'd have to say fred willard um jennifer coolidge <laughs> Uh, Higgins, Higgins was, was hard to, it was so brilliantly funny, but he was only hard to work with because he was so smart and fast. And it wasn't like he was going to be out of danger of breaking up. I was in danger of going, excuse me, can I say that on the radio? Maybe not. Well, it's well, okay. You were breaking up on your phone. That's perfect time. <laughs> so, so which, uh, so which one was the easiest to, to crack up? Who was the one that was simple that would just break? Um, I broke I broke Chris a couple of times. You did. Which was That's it. Edifying. <laughs> edifying is a great uh, word for it. Yeah, and uh, and uh, Ricky Gervais when he was in the, for your consideration, and I had one little piece with him, and I, I had a feeling about him 
that he was ready to fall on the floor at all times. <laughs> I love but that. He did. Yeah, yeah. No, <sighs> but he just he he loved being on the show so much, and such you know we, we, we loved him so much, and it was really fun. All right, I've got two. Um, I've got two more for you, Michael McKeon. Uh, okay. Here, here you go. First one. Uh, uh, you just mentioned Rob Reiner. Is it true or false that he was going to originally be in a, a Spinal Tap band member, but became the director because he didn't look good in spandex? True or false? No, that, that's false. <laughs> Not true. That's false. No, no, no. It was a, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Although now I'm thinking about Rob Ryan and spandex. Thanks very much. Uh, my apologies then. Okay, um, then the, <laughs> the see that's why we ask you this to to make the, make sure it's these things we read are true or false. Last one for you. You were asked to join the original cast of Breaking Bad. But because of conflicting stage commitments, you could not do it. Is that true or false? All I can say is that there was a uh, a, a casting thing that uh, Vince directed uh, uh, called me directly about, mm-hmm. and he said, "There's a part we'd like you to do on this," and I couldn't because I was on my way to New York to do a, a play. So that's that's all of that. Uh, you know, I'm I'm not going to talk about what part it was oh. because then it becomes and then it becomes you know it becomes fan stuff, and it's like. You, you know, know, it's better you guys to just kind of guess. Uh, you know, which one uh, would it be? Would it be? No, you won't no, even no. you won't even twitch in the direction if I guess which one it would be. Uh, Michael, it was not Salamanca. That's all I'm going to say. It's, it's not Salamanca. <laughs> 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 okay, so that we leaves. We still have that actor. We still have our role in the movie last night. Oh boy, from 1987. So we saw a young. Mm. Oh boy, his phone's breaking up. Well, Michael, look, I, I appreciate you taking the time here uh, on the Rich Eisen show. I could, I could go on and on and on with you, but I appreciate the time. Congrats on playing God. Available now in theaters, VOD, and other digital platforms. Will and all digital platforms. We'll, we'll hopefully Thanks, pick this up another time. Pleasant. Thank you. Right back at you yeah. at Michael at M J McKeon M C K E A N, right here on the Rich Eisen show. Now I'm just going to think the rest of the show who he could have been on. Ermin Tra? Ooh. That's a possibility. I think that's on the list. Who else would it be? Who else could it possibly be? Pinkman. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Pinkman. Obviously, the mother load of all of the, what we'd like you to try if he was Walter White. Walter White that's yeah. why, you know. I mean, could he have been Hank? That'd have been a good one. Hank, the brother-in-law who is on to everything. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.